forward to the cloud. All right. Um, so welcome to um, our call today. Um, we're speaking to Sally Story of John Cullen um, amongst a series of interviews with industry leaders in the design world to understand a little bit more about what you're passionate about and, and um, your day-to-day -day, um, life. So my first question is, tell us a little bit more about the origins of John Cullen and your role on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, it's a wonderful story in a way and a real opportunity. One of those things that happens rarely in that I was studying architecture at university and had a passion for light was mainly more about daylighting, but it also led to me reading up and finding out there was this person called John Cullen who was just setting out on, it was in a magazine, I read it about him, and he was just setting out about doing lighting for the homes and artificial lighting. So I wrote him a letter and said, could I come and help him? Mm. You know, and I thought, I was a second year architecture student, so I go along and he actually says, yes, I also thought, at the time I should write to various other people, but nobody else replied, but he replied, you know, that thing, serendipity, I say. And he's working from home in a small flat in Smith Street in London. And he, during the interview that we got on really well, he pointed to the corner shop across the road in Smith Street and said, I've just taken on the lease of that. Would you design my showroom? Cool. So I thought I'll say yes and worry about how to do it later yeah. and so that was the beginning um he said yes you can help me design the showroom and so that became the start of my dissertation in that then I used the showroom which was a bit like our lighting pod is today in the studio was about how to present light and how it changes that one space can be the same but your interpretation is dictated by the way it's lit mm -hmm. and so this little shop really, corner shop, had blinds that came down and the room changed. And then my thesis was on bringing people in to see how they reacted to different environments, whether it was a cold light, cold light a warm light, very dramatic, and how they felt. And that was my dissertation. And that was the point at which I suddenly fell even more in love with light. Every project I did for my third year was on light mm -hmm. in architecture. And when I left, um, the choice was really, do you go and work, you do your year out if you're gonna be an architect and then you go back for your masters. And my year out was with John Cullen and every holiday in between had been working and doing all his plans. And he um, sort of almost made me a partner really from the beginning. I, it was an amazing, there was just a few of us to start with. Probably I was there about four people when I joined properly. When I first joined, it was just me and John. So the holidays were that, but by the time I left university, there were four of us. And then sadly he died in about two years later. And sort of, I was left with the business manager running the business and I didn't know what else to do. So that's, it all just started from there yeah. and continued from there. Amazing. And what is your role on a day-to-day -day basis now that the company is a whole different animal? Um, well, I really, I feel that I'm the, I'm the creative um, director. That's what I love doing is I feel a passion about the way things look, the way things feel. And I'm much more visual than writing. And to me, that's where it is. So I have some... And, but I have, I also enjoy the thing of bringing up designs. I feel I have an amazing role, not so much in the structure, structure of running, mm -hmm. but being able to be involved with product design because I'm at the end of where design is going in many different aspects. But also the more you've done design, it's really nice seeing other young designers come up because in a way I feel that I get inspired by some of their ideas. And I think you also begin to edit ideas. You get more inspiration from other people's ideas, but also you know when there are too many ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you uh, can streamline it. And yes, you can streamline to what works. Yeah. And so I think 
I love my job as much today as I did at the beginning. So that's quite an opportunity. <laughs> But it's totally different. It's really interesting. And if you think about it in, in comparison to maybe different industries that are maybe less focused on residential design or maybe different lighting um, designer strategies, how would you describe your approach? What What is kind of the first thing that you think of when you start a design? Um. I think I'm lucky as well because I'm so design orientated. I was have done it for a long time, but I've been involved in commercial work as well. You know, in separately, I've done lots of hotels and offices and super yachts. But what I find is that the knowledge you gain from that drives you to consider what is the best for residential, because you're exploring the whole time ideas and different challenges. You're thinking, my goodness, that would be perfect. That's what I'd like in my own house. It's often, oh my goodness, if I could have one of those. So one of the first things I always felt was back in the day when I started, there were, the fixtures were so big. To me, it was all about miniaturization and it still is about miniaturization. And what is rather amazing, what was miniaturization in the late eighties, nineties, is totally different. You can be much more miniature now. And it's rather wonderful how one trend has been able to continue and develop and get better and better. And I, I suppose the thing I think about is you go into space and I feel like a lighting designer is a bit like an interior designer, has a palette of textures and materials and we have a vocabulary or palette of light effects. And it's playing with those light effects to make the space work harder. I believe rooms don't have to work in just one way. They can be transformed with light. So you can one, make one space work harder. So it's really important to know what to light and what not to light. And that play of light and shadow is really that's what it's all about is understanding that balance amazing that's really really interesting i hadn't i hadn't thought of what not to light what to light seems such an obvious one but i guess it's as much about what you add as to what you don't highlight in a way yeah really interesting and you mentioned kind of working with you know young upcoming people in your team and how that can be a real inspiration what qualities do you look for in your design team and what sets them apart from the rest? I think it's probably like you, when you're interviewing somebody, you want to see a spark. I think whenever I'm interviewing them, they don't need to know so much about light. I like to, them to talk me through their portfolio mm -hmm. to start with. I want to see a spark of creativity, a thought that might be unusual, and then it's also a thought process because you wonder why they generated that idea. And then you wonder whether you're in tune with it or you, and where it would take you. I also, the other thing is looking at care and detail, the way they, somebody might've cared about why they did something in a way, because care is so important in the way we deal with people or spaces or anything. And in any, job of excellence I think detail is you know a bad detail kills a project as you know or bad and, attention to detail in general it can uh, mistake and ruin the whole scheme for sure and detail to me is really important and probably the final thing as well is in that you know whether you have a resonance with them it's they need to be fun to be with because in the end the greatness of a team is if there's a synergy and everybody enjoys being together. So probably it's that creativity, care and attention to detail and fun to be with are the key things. Perfect ingredients, yeah, definitely. And what would you say is your proudest project that you've worked on to date? So, you know. um, that was um, probably the ones I can't even talk about, oh. <laughs> which is, you know, um, I've had such an opportunity and in some of the worlds of um, super yachts and other things that 
some of those have been the most fun and it's been really fun because of the work I've done to even become a judge on the Design and Innovation Awards for Super Yachts. So some of those, there's also, I have done, you know, it's been really, one of the things that's really fun is that often is my next project because I get excited with the people I'm dealing with. You know, I worked on Ham Yard, the hotel, which I loved and working with Kit Kemp was really fun. And I mean, then I also look back on my career and I, early on, and I'm not so, the project was challenging, was working on David Bowie's apartment in New York, but I think I was starstruck as well, because he was my <laughs> hero. So I'm not so sure whether it was the work or the being starstruck, yeah. but I think it's, I do love, I love the challenges. And I think sometimes um, what I love as well is working on different styles. What really fascinates me is the fact that I'd like, like doing, working out the solution for a really minimal interior mm -hmm. and how, and that's quite exacting. How can I make it be nice and comfortable to be in and soft and inviting? And then at the same time, going to a historic building, which I have to be equally creative on thinking, how can I bring some of the magic mm -hmm. of contemporary ideas into a historic building to make those flowers on the table be lit? but you don't want spots in the ceiling. So how do I conceal them in the chandelier? So I think it's, I'm lucky because it's that constant variety that means you're having to constantly reevaluate solu different solutions. And I remember um, once listening to one of your talks and you mentioning your own home. Is it something that, allows you um, to experiment in different ways and, and test things out that you might not want to um, do on a client's project because it's just a little bit too risky before you know it actually works? <laughs> um, well, I think that it's, it's funny that I think that I've probably, I haven't quite got the budget of my clients. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't experiment as much, although probably I do more in lighting and then have more MDF whereas they might have proper joinery <laughs> painted, mine might be. But I do try things out. I mean, recently it, um, I've got a lot of surface mounted spotlights on an old ceiling in my, and I wanted to be sure that everybody, when I was saying that this is the way forward on list of builders, if you want to create some magic it doesn't matter being surface on a ceiling because actually it disappears mm -hmm. because what you see is what you light and if you take it away you've lost something in the room and it was really fun experimenting with that and I've used the pictures now quite often to experiment now this is lit in a without any sparkle this is when I've turned it on and you suddenly realize you hadn't even noticed where the spotlight was and mm -hmm. so I suppose I do and I think with joinery and things, I think probably the most experimental has actually been on super yachts because that's like doing a jewel box in itself. And where would you say um, your main kind of inspiration comes from to, I think we, we touched upon it earlier where you said, you know, working in commercial, uh, you know, hospitality, yacht design influences what, how you uh, approach residential interior design. But how do you come up with the new products that you develop within John Common? Well, at the moment, um, we've just, it's called, I, I call it sometimes the lockdown like it, <laughs> it was. Um, I just felt that with all this miniaturization and there's a trend that, you know, you have, of shelving and I quite like joinery lighting because I feel it it's a way of adding light that is like a lamp and soft and so we came up with the minim which is literally the size of a five pence piece wow. and is 18 mil deep and low glare and fits into a piece of joinery and it's a little black it's 15 mil across but you can add colors to it so you could have a brass collar to make it like a brass thing so it's you can make it like a pair of earrings grow yeah. it and I think to me um miniaturization is still the trend that I have never let go of because what I've loved is effects I think there are lots of other trends going on at the moment in lighting um, 
there's a lot about linear at the moment, whether it's track, it's linear LED, it's very on trend and I'm using that too. But that I think will come and go. But if you can create the effects in a way that you hardly see them with miniaturization, or it's a bit like um, we do a small, a very small little miniature downlight called the Pulse Spring 30. And you can also have it in a sort of like a blade, in a sort of long fitting too. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about it is you can change the beam variety within it. So I can make that be directional on a kitchen island where the same one fitting on a table could pin spot the flowers, but give a wide wash as well. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to combine to make less do more. Less do more. No, that sounds very, yeah, I can, I can totally see how that would give you a lot more longevity because at the end of the day, there are a few types of interiors where you want to see those striking light features, but most of the time you want to accentuate what's already there and just make it sing rather than take away and draw attention to the fitting rather than the effect it creates. I think that's what I've always thought that it's all about the light. The product is actually a side uh, it, it's the side thing. I mean, that one shouldn't say that, but the smaller and more discreet I can make it, to achieve the desired effect, the more successful it is in a way. And you know, there's nothing wrong with the tracks I've been doing tracks now. I quite like the idea of something being more honest, but I think we're all in that feeling after lockdown where be proud of a concrete ceiling, be proud of that. But there are phases that we all go through in different eras, I think as well. And just to kind of step away from professional life, um, at the end of a week or the end of a long day, what do you do to switch off? What what makes you tick? I was trying to, um, I don't know. I think the, the real thing that makes me stop work is travel because oh. then I'm so far away from it. I yeah. do really switch off. Yeah. I think the problem is when you're in your own house and things, you can't, um, you're always, I don't know, it's always there. And, I, and because I love it, it's my fault. Yeah. When I go away, I'm slightly out of touch. I go to an unreal world. So there hasn't been so much switch off in the last year. So come uh, June, July, and we're able to travel again, what would be the first kind of flight that you'd book? I think the weird thing is I almost always revert. Um, I love India. I, I think I went, um, I went on my honeymoon to India and fell in love there. And I think it's one of those places that never ceases to excite. I think it's the color. I think it's the, the total exuberance really. It's the, I also think some of the architecture there is rather amazing. The old palaces, the detail. Yeah, we were meant to go in March, but that got canceled. <laughs> But it, it, it's got that thing, and I, that's why I think that it never, it never disappoints. It's frustrating. <laughs> Your travel is frustrating. <laughs> but I still come back uplifted, and I look back at some of my photographs of the light shining and getting that fretwork pattern, and it always makes me smile. And so yeah. I think that's the place. Great. And lastly, what is next for you? What are you working on at the moment? Um, there are a few, uh, having just launched this product, um, the product team are also looking at other new launches to come out. Um, we're just about, we're just doing a framing projector now that's the force of frame, which is in the spotlight range. In projects, um, I'm really, I've got such, I feel spoiled in that there's such a variety going on. I've got this, um, we've got this amazing house being made out of ground earth. Wow. That's really contemporary and really challenging and, and it's quite modern, but then the client has a collection that is rather wonderful of art. So there's this wonderful thing of minimalism meets texture and things so that's quite exciting and then there's the most amazing um sort of 
old build. So I, I like the fact that I've got this wonderful old listed project, which is an old estate, and then this ground earth thing in the middle of the countryside. And I think they're both so amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your uh, for your time and sharing all of that. It was uh, really, really interesting. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you for listening and okay. asking me and challenging me. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's fun because, you know, you, you go back day to day and talking about, you know, the projects that we work on together. But it's, it, you know, it's something else to really think about how do you, you know, how do you even get started and how you get what, what drives you on and what inspires you on a day-to-day -day basis. It's been uh, really, really interesting. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure.